This video is for AQA, AS Economics, and it's for either macro or micro, so either paper one or paper two. But it's looking at the diagram question, which is worth four marks. Now, when the examiners give uh, marking this diagram, they're looking at certain, I suppose, a certain criteria to award the marks. And how I would ensure that I meet that criteria is thinking about ACE. Now, what I mean by ACE is, uh, first of all, let's look at the A. The A should stand for axis. So have you labelled the axis correctly? Because they're easy, they're the easy mistakes to lose. So, for example, if it's, um, if it's for macro, are you putting price level rather than just price, which is more associated with micro? Those little common mistakes can easily uh, lose you a mark. Then if we're looking at C, then we're looking at the curves. So what I mean by that is, um, usually the questions will ask you based on standard economic diagrams. Sometimes they might ask you about bar graphs or drawing pie charts, but let's just um, use this video to look at the economic diagrams. So if they ask you, for example, to draw a, a shift of whatever kind, you have to make sure that you do the accurate shift. You have to make sure that you recognise, for example, in micro, if it's supply or demand, if it's, for example, um, if it's externalities, is it based on consumption or production? If it's macro, are you doing it based on an aggregate demand shift? Are you doing it on a short run aggregate supply shift? You have to make sure you get your curves right. And that, again, could get you, uh, it can get you a couple of marks as long as you do what's, what's coming next, which is the equilibrium. So E stands for equilibrium. Now, you, have to, you get a point straight away for just doing your initial equilibrium, making sure that your initial equilibrium is correct. And then, if you get the curves right, then you should draw your new equilibrium and just highlight what has happened. So for example, what has happened to quantity? What has happened to real GDP? What has happened to price or price level? So what we're going to do is I'm just going to give you a, a general example of a past paper question and it's a macro question and I'm just going to show you where you get the max from. So as we can see with this paper 2 question, we've referenced the extract B, lines 7 to 14, uh, draw an aggregate demand, aggregate supply diagram to illustrate the likely impact of a weaker pound on the price level and the national output. The first thing I'd do is I'd be looking at what is the question specifically asking. And, and again, make it easy for yourself. Highlight the key terms. You know you're having to draw either an AD or an AS sh uh, shift because that's what it's telling you to do. You know you have to draw the, the equilibriums because it's asking you what's gonna happen to price level and national output. And um, a weak pound, actually you could probably, you could draw two different diagrams. And what I always do is I use, uh, for example, if it's a strong pound, I use spiced, strong pound, imports cheaper, exports dearer, and I, and I collect the um, imports being cheaper as one, and the exports being dearer as one as well, as, as an alternative, sorry. And with a weak pound, I use whippy deck. So a weak pound, imports dearer, or exports cheaper. So again, I would use either imports dearer, or I look at exports cheaper. Now what I've done within this video is I've looked at exports being cheaper, because if exports are being cheaper, they might be more internationally competitive. And what that might mean is it might attract other countries to buy UK goods and services, which would cause injections into the UK's national income. And that would bring about, remember it's a component of aggregate demand in terms of um, X, so it would bring about a, an increase in aggregate demand. So that should be a right shift. And we can tell that because of what's happening to national output or national income. We can see that Y1 here has shifted to Y2. And when there's that taking place, we can see that there's an increase in price level one to price level two. Now, the marks are, for example, the axis, and you could put real GDP, or you could put um, uh, Y. It's up to you uh, what you do in terms of that, but make sure it's the right axis. Price level, so if you just wrote P, you, you wouldn't get the mark because it's, it's inaccurate. You have to look at the level, because it's the level of the economy. For my short run aggregate supply and my AD1, I've got the initial equilibrium marks. I've got the shift, so I've got the correct shift in the curve, so that's got me a mark as well. And I've drawn my equilibrium to show what has happened to the price level and the national output. So again, as an examiner, has, uh, has the candidate offered a correct axis? Yep. Has the uh, candidate got the curves and the, just the, the foundations of the diagram correct? Yep. And have they highlighted that via the equilibrium? Correct. 
Just to add as well to this diagram, I could have looked at imports being dearer and what that would have caused is a leftwards short run aggregate supply shift. So I could have, I could have, if I wanted to, focused on short run aggregate supply and just done the initial AD1. But it doesn't really matter which one you go for because in the mark scheme they have both for imports being dearer and another one for exports being cheaper so you get the full marks.